بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We move on to a new chapter in the book of Salat from Umdatul Ahkam and this chapter deals with prayer of rain known as Salatul Istisqa so you're praying not for rain you're praying to Allah Azza wa Jal asking him to send us rain and hadith number 150 which was narrated by Abdullah ibn Asim al-Mazini may Allah be pleased with him who will uh, read it for us the first brother on the second row narrated Abdullah ibn Asim al-Mazini the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa went out to invoke Allah for rain he faced the Qibla invoking Allah. He turned his cloak inside and out and then offered a two rakah prayer with audible recitation. Bukhari. And in another narration, he came to the Musalla. Okay, in this hadith, Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him, is telling us how the Prophet والسلام, prayed these prayers. He told us that he prayed two rak'ahs, he prayed them loudly. So it's not a silent prayer. And he also told us that it was offered in Al Musalla and not in the Masjid. And in it, he faced the Qibla, that is for supplication, not in the prayer. And during which he turned over his cloak. And how is this done? Scholars say that usually you have another cloak you put on this clothes of mine and it would be to turn it the left to the right and the right to the left and you put it on so actually what was inside now is outside and what was outside now is inside why is this the scholars justified this by their own ishtihad we don't have anything concrete they said that this is part of a good omen that Allah Azza wa Jal would change things to the best so as I am having this good omen I turn my cloak backwards so that Allah would change what we're facing of this drought into rain but again this is what they justified and we don't have anything concrete to make sure that this is the right justification or not but we follow the sunnah and everybody who prays salatul istisqa does this if you don't have a cloak you can also change take this and turn it upside down because it would be part of following the sunnah of course among the things that we uh, learn from it is that facing the qibla in dua is recommended is it mandatory no yet they do not affect in the validity of your dua uh, we have hadith 151 abdurrahman narrated anas bin malik razil anhu on a friday a person entered the main mosque through the gate facing the pulpit while allah's prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was delivering the khutbah the man stood in front of allah's prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and said O oh Allah's Prophet, the livestock are dying and the roads are cut off, so please pray to Allah for rain. Anas added, Allah's Prophet وسلم, raised both his hands and said, O oh Allah, bless us with rain. O oh Allah, bless us with rain. O oh Allah, bless us with rain. Anas added, By Allah, we could not see any trace of cloud in the sky and there was no building or a house between us and the mountains of Salah. Anas added, a heavy cloud like a shield appeared from behind it. When it came in the middle of the sky, it spread and then rained. Anas further said, by Allah, we could not see the sun for a week. Next Friday, a person entered through the same gate and at the time, Allah's Prophet وسلم, was delivering the Friday's khutbah. The man stood in front of him and said, 
O Allah's Prophet, the livestock are dying and the roads are cut off. Please pray to Allah to withhold rain. Anas added, Allah's Prophet raised both his hands and said, O Allah, round about us and not on us. O Allah, on the small mountains, on the hills, in the valleys, and on the places where trees grow. So the rain stopped and we came out walking in the sun. In this hadith, it's one of the Prophet's miracles, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was delivering the khutbah of Jum'ah when a man stood up and complained, saying, the Prophet of Allah, the livestock is dying and the roads are cut off. Due to what? Due to famine, due to drought, due to the lack of water. So the livestock are dying because there is no water to drink and the roads are cut off. We cannot travel without water and we will die out of thirst if we travel. So the Prophet raised his hands. And this is one, if not the only location during the Friday speech where you are allowed to raise your hands in supplication. Because we know that it is not permissible, it is not part of the Sunnah to raise your hands in Friday supplication generally. Except when you are praying for, for rain. This is permissible for the Imam to raise his hands and likewise for the followers, the Ma'mumun, to raise their hands as well to say Ameen. And the Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, Allahumma aghithna, three times. And whenever he spoke, alayhi salatu wasalam, he used to speak in three times so that people would learn from him. Whenever he would supplicate, he would supplicate three times. So, Anas is saying that we looked above and there was not a single cloud. And there was a small mountain called Sal'a. And there was nothing between us and that mountain. No buildings, no, nothing. The whole sky is clear. The minute the Prophet said this, a small cloud came like a shield, like a round shield. And once it took its place in the middle of the sky, it spread to be number of big dark clouds and it started to rain. So this is one of the miracles of the Prophet ﷺ. However, a week later, exactly on Friday, while the Prophet was delivering the sermon, a man stood and complained in the same manner. He said, O Prophet of Allah, the livestock are dying. Last week they were dying because of drought, this week because of the floods. And the roads are cut off. Last week because of the drought, today because of the floods and the amount of water. So pray to Allah to withhold the rain from us. Now the Prophet والسلام, knew that rain helps and it's a blessing of Allah as mentioned in the Quran it is a sign of Allah's mercy it's described in the Quran as a sign of Allah's mercy this rain so the Prophet did not say oh Allah stop the rain he said oh Allah round us and about us meaning not on us make it come round us so we would be saved from the effect of rain, but around us where we have to uh, grow the grass and the trees and the people would benefit, make it around us. And he said, on top of small mountains, on top of hills, in valleys, in places where rain would benefit the trees and the grass would grow. So immediately Allah Azza wa Jal answered his prophets prayer and Anna says we went out walking on or under the sun without any cloud though we were rained for a whole week now from this hadith we also learn something that is not related to rain something that is related to joining salah we know that joining salat is permissible when it rains only to join Dhuhr to Asr or Maghrib to Isha. In this hadith we learn that it is not permissible to join Asr to Friday. It is not 
permissible to combine Asr with Friday. Why? Because only Zuhur can be combined to or by Asr. And Friday is not Zuhur. And that is why when it rained, the Prophet did not, والسلام, after Jumu'ah, prayed Asr with them and combined it to Jumu'ah. Though he did this in other prayers, like Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, reported and other companions. So this is something we learn from this hadith. We also learn from this hadith the issue on tawassul. And this is something that a lot of the Muslims make great mistakes when they don't make tawassul at all or they go to the extreme and ask everyone alive or dead for tawassul. And what is the permissible tawassul that we are allowed to do? Scholars say that the greatest and the most beneficial way of offering tawassul and what is tawassul is urging Allah Azza wa Jal. The greatest way of offering tawassul is to ask Allah by his beautiful names. This is the best way of making tawassul and urging Allah Azza wa Jal. We have a short break. Stay tuned inshallah. We'll... Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. So the best way of making tawassul is through calling Allah by his beautiful names and attributes. So you say, Ya Rahman, irhamni. I'm urging Allah. Ya Akram al Akrameen, urzuqni. Ya Ghaffar, igfirli. So I keep on asking Allah Azza wa Jal with his beautiful names and attributes. The second way of offering tawassul is when I Ask someone who is righteous and alive to supplicate for me. He has to be righteous and he has to be alive. So I go to this great scholar of Islam. I go to this great pious or righteous person and I say, Akhi, I have a problem. Pray for me. Ask Allah for me to do this or that. So this is permissible. Why? Because he's righteous and he's alive. And throughout the life of the Prophet والسلام, the companions all the time used to go to him and ask him to pray for them or supplicate for them or ask Allah Azza wa Jal for them. And this is permissible. What is not permissible is to go to someone who is deviant, who is an innovator, who is not a righteous and pious person and you ask him to make dua therefore you are allowed to ask for wasila through a righteous person a pious person a knowledgeable person by him asking Allah for you it is permissible for me to ask Allah through his supplication so I tell him supplicate to Allah Azza wa Jal for me and this is permissible the third permissible way of seeking Allah's wasila or asking Allah Azza wa Jal is through your good deeds. How is that? You ask Allah Azza wa Jal, Oh Allah, I ask you to grant me a child because I pray to you Fajr every single day in the masjid. So you're asking Allah Azza wa Jal by this good deed that you have done. And this is mentioned in Surah Al Imran, Rabbana, Innana Samirna Munadi and Yunadi Lil Imani and Aminu Bi Rabbikum Faamanna. What do you want? Rabbana Fagfir Lana Dunubana. So they preceded by saying, Oh Allah, we have heard someone who is calling to Islam and Iman and we have believed in him. Therefore, forgive our sins. So this is putting forward your good deeds. Likewise, those three who were trapped in the cave with a big stone. Each one of them, what did they do? They started listing their good deeds. Oh Allah, I had a cousin that I loved, but I did not commit haram for your sake. If this was sincere, open the gate 
or open the rock and a little bit was open. Second one said, I had parents and I did not feed my kids the milk that I usually milk for them and they were asleep so I stayed next to them until they woke up and I gave them. If I did this for your sake, free us. And a little bit of the rock was opened. The third one said, Oh Allah, I had someone who worked with me and left without taking his pay. And he came a few years later and he was asking for his pay. So I told him, look at these camels and cows and sheep that are filling the valley. This is your pay, take it. His pay was like maybe five rupees or 10 rupees or whatever. Yet he invested it until it became this much and he did not neglect that man's rights. So the man took it and left away. The man says, if I did this for your sake, oh Allah opened the cave and the cave was open. So these are the three permissible ways for you to ask for Allah's wasila, for Allah's answering of your supplication. Going back to the issue of seeking rain and water from Allah Azza wa Jal through prayer, this can be done through three means. The first one is the most famous one. You all go to the musalla and you offer the prayer of for rain. And the format or the description of the prayer for rain is like the way you pray Eid. So it has seven takbir in the first rak'ah and five takbir in the second rak'ah. Is the khutbah before or after? There are hadiths that say that it's before, there are hadiths that say that's after. So inshallah, both are acceptable. Secondly, regarding the prayer itself, this is one way of doing it, to go to the musalla. The second way of requesting rain is through khutbatul jumu'ah, the sermon of Friday, as the man came and asked and the Prophet supplicated. The third way of requesting for rain is individually. When we're praying on our own, if I prostrate on my own, I say, Allahumma aghithna, Allahumma aghithna, O oh Allah, bless us with rain, bless us with water. This is permissible. So there are three ways of seeking the blessings of Allah through rain. Is this understood, inshallah? Do we have any questions? Yes, brother. Asalaamu Alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum. Sheikh, the last time we met, you mentioned about the Salat al Kusuf. So is it permissible to offer Salat al Kusuf in a big uh, ground or something? And you said that Allah is also amazed. So can you please give an example from the Quran and the Sunnah that explain that Allah was amazed or is amazed? As for the first question, when you say that can we pray it in an open ground? No, it should be prayed in the masjid. But if the masjid is not sufficient, then it's okay to pray in an open ground. But the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ was to be prayed in the masjid, so we don't go and collect people and go somewhere else, because this would be innovating. As for the word amazed, the Prophet ﷺ had a guest coming to him. And he asked all of his wives, do you have anything to feed my guest? They said no. So he addressed the companions and said, who among you? can host my guest. Abu Talha al-Ansari said, I will do that. He took the guest to his house. Who was Abu Talha's wife? I think she's Rumaysa. She's a Rumaysa known as, her name is Umm Sulaim, the mother of Anas ibn Malik. So he went there and said to his wife, I have hosted the guest of the Prophet Do we have food? She said, by Allah, we don't have any food except this meal which I was preparing for my children. So he told her, occupy your children with anything until they sleep. And the children was, were crying. She gave them water, were crying, were crying until they felt tired and slept. Then he asked her to bring the food. Once the guest was there, he asked her to turn off the light, it would be dark, and they pretend as if they're eating. So, the guest was there, they pretended as if they were eating, but the only one who was eating was the guest, so that the food would be sufficient for them. The following morning, 
the Prophet والسلام, after Fajr said to Abu Talha إن الله قد عجب لصنيعكما البارحة which means Allah Azza wa Jal was amazed by what you had done yesterday with the guest so this is one of the hadith there are other hadith you all know about Allah's being happy for the repentance more than the happiness of someone who lost his camel with his food on top of it and then when he found it he said oh Allah I am your God and you're my servant he made a mistake by because he was so happy so the Prophet is telling us Allah is more happy than this man so all of these are attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal yes Alaikum Shaykh Allah. as you said that for rain you can ask a righteous person and who is alive so a person may argue that if you want rain so you have to ask the righteous person to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I want Jannah. So how can I directly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Even I need a righteous person to ask. You ask Allah azza wa jal for Jannah straightforward. And you may ask a righteous person to ask Allah for Jannah for you or to seek forgiveness for you. And that is why we always ask righteous people to supplicate for us. Don't forget us from your dua. What, what do I mean by this? What dua am I looking for? May Allah forgive you. May Allah grant you Jannah. So this is permissible to ask people for dua, but it is a lower grade. The better grade would be that you ask Allah Azza wa Jal straight without any people. And likewise, at the time of Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, there was a great drought. No one went to the grave of the Prophet ﷺ saying, O Prophet of Allah, do this or do that or ask Allah for us. What did they do? They went for the Musalla asking Allah for rain. Umar addressed the people and he said, O Allah, we used to, at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, go to your Prophet so that he would supplicate for us. And now we present Al-Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet, so that he would ask you for rain. Come Abbas. And Abbas came and said, Oh Allah, the people have presented me because of my closeness and relative, because I'm a relative of our Prophet Oh Allah, grant us rain. And they were granted rain. Nobody went to the dead. So from this we learn that it is permissible to ask righteous people for supplicating to you and for rain and this is all the time we have until we meet next time fi amanillah wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh